Hello children, good evening to all of you. In the previous video, we have discussed three states of matter, solid, liquid and gases. But now in this video, we will just try to know how one state is going to convert into another state. Means that how solid will convert into liquid or liquid will convert into gaseous state. In this video, we will just try to know that what are the factors which are responsible for conversion in solid into liquid or liquid into gases. So basically, the two factors are there. The first factor is changing its temperature and the second factor that governs the interconversion that is changing pressure. We will just try to know what temperature and its role in changing the state and then after we will discuss pressure and its role in changing the state. Okay? So, temperature. Suppose you take one beaker. In this beaker, you take some ice cube. Okay? You just arrange a thermometer inside in it. This is your thermometer, this is your capillary tube inside it. Make an arrangement, wire cause is there, make an arrangement so that gently heating is going through. Wire gauze is there. Okay. You will observe that when we are applying heat from the town, there will be rise in temperature. Okay. But as long as the ice is not melted, there will be rise in temperature. But when the ice starts melting immediately, there will be no rise in temperature. The temperature or you can say the thermometric liquid becomes static. Why it becomes static? Be because something is there which is present in the system that is not allowing it to this thermometer liquid to go up or you are giving heat and the heat is getting utilized. That is the reason that you are giving heat, the heat is utilizing in the system and that heat is not going to be transferred to the thermometric liquid and that's why there is no rise in temperature. So we have to know that what, what is the thing which is present there, why there is no rise in temperature. You are giving heat but the thermometer scale is not showing any type of temperature rise. What is the reason behind that? Actually, whenever we are heat, giving the heat, we all are aware in the previous video, I have already explained to you that inter, there is interparticle force of attraction is there between molecules. So this is ice, the solid state, definitely the strong bond of attraction is there. So when we are going to give heat, the heat which is supplied by this flame or any source of heat is going to utilize by uh, this particle to break their bond and when the already the particle where attra uh, attraction force was there and when we are applying heat this heat supplied by this is utilized by this particle to break their internal bond if the heat is utilized here only definitely the heat is utilized that's why this thermometer is not getting any heat and that is why there is no rise in temperature okay so this type of heat is called hidden heat hidden heat why it is used the word hidden here because the heat is present in the system but that cannot be recognized by this thermometer. Why? Because already the heat is utilized by this ice to break its bond. Okay, when all the bond, all the ice molecules, all particles you can say completely uh, change into liquid state and after further also you are, when you are applying heat from down then it will start rising its temperature again. Okay, so this is called hidden heat. Or another name is called latent heat. Okay, so let me explain you what is the meaning of latent heat. This is a hidden heat that requires to convert 
वन के जी ऑफ एनी सॉलिड और लिक्विड टू आइदर लिक्विड और गैसियस स्टेट ओके सो this in this system the heat that you are supplying that is remains in hidden form and it is remaining in hidden form means that it is present in the system and it lies in breaking the bond so after that we are going to start uh, the different type of hidden heat okay we going to start children okay there are generally there are two type of uh, latent heat concept that we have to study latent heat the first is latent heat of fusion and here the second that is latent heat of vaporization it is very much clear fusion means definitely solid is changing to liquid state and vaporization means what liquid is changing into gas is state very good liquid is changing to gas is state so if you want to uh, give the definition of latent heat of fusion you can write in this way the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of solid into liquid at its melting point and in this latent of vaporization you can write that amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of liquid into gaseous form at its at its boiling point okay so these all are the basic difference between latent heat of fusion and latent of vaporization fusion means solid to liquid and vaporization means liquid to vapor form that is called uh, latent heat of vaporization so in this way we can understand that the liquid is changing into gaseous form solid is also changing into uh, liquid form so there are certain condition you are means the temperature is playing very important role in changing their state okay one more thing that you have to keep in your mind that latent heat of latent heat of fusion of ice is 335 kJ per mole and latent heat of vaporization of water is 225 kJ per mole is okay children now after that we have to know some conversion unit conversion means solid uh, the temperature is also important when we are converting one scale into another scale how temperature is important suppose Uh, 33 uh, 33 degrees celsius given and if you have to convert into kelvin scale so how will you do there is one relationship relationship is what that 273 plus degrees celsius that will convert into kelvin suppose 24 degrees celsius is given and if you have to convert into kelvin then how will you convert only by adding 273 like this 24 plus 273 it will be 437 729 kelvin clear like this also if you if you want to convert uh, kelvin into celsius suppose 313 kelvin is given and you have to convert into degree celsius how will you convert very simple is this for how Only you just subtract two seventy three from here. Three minus three definitely zero. What 
90 degrees Celsius. So this way you can convert from, um, from one temperature scale into another temperature scale. Is okay? Okay. Now we have seen right now that I have tried to uh, discuss that temperature is playing very important role in interconversion from solid to liquid or from liquid to gases. Now one one most important term is also here that is uh, some condition is there when solid is directly changing into gaseous state without coming to liquid state. That the special term is there and that special term is called sublimation. 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 What is sublimation? In which solid is directly changing into gaseous form without coming to liquid form. So many examples are there. Camphor, naphthalene ball, so many examples are there. Okay? Like this. Clear? Yeah? So, in, during this process, solid is changing into gaseous form. Okay? So, <coughs> in this way, we have seen that there are certain basis, means certain ways by which solid is changing into liquid form, liquid is changing into gaseous form, and in some cases, solid is changing into gaseous form. It means that there is an interconversion. One state is converting to another and, and vice versa. So, after that, we are going to coordinate all the three states by a interconversion triangle. We will see. Interconversion triangle. What is this? You just see solid is changing into liquid. This process is called melting, and liquid is changing back to solid. This process is called freezing. When we raise the temperature, solid is changing into liquid. And when we lower the temperature, the liquid is changing back to solid. Okay? When we heat, when we heat, the liquid will change into vapors form. Water vapor or vapor form. And this process is called boiling. But when we cool or lower the temperature, the vapor will condense back to liquid form. Okay, so this process is called condensation. Okay, right now we have discussed solid is changing into vapor. This process is called sublimation. And vapor is changing back, it is also called sublimation. Okay, so Till now we have discussed the interconversion, the importance of temperature in interconversion of one state into another state. So this is enough. Try to revise the things, try to understand the things and I am giving uh, one question for you so that you can coordinate all the uh, previous things that I have explained to you. Write one question. Right. certain substance x that exists in solid state with definite shape and volume on heating it converts into y it converts into y with definite volume only but not definite shape Definite volume only but not definite shape. Okay. Further heating of Y, further heating of Y, it forms Z which has neither definite shape nor definite volume. Now finally you identify X, Y and Z. It? Identify x, y, z. Done? Okay. 
so please keep reading try to improve thank you to all of you not done all this thing thank you